So a warm welcome to everyone today on this beautiful, not quite sunny morning, but it is beautiful nevertheless through God's grace. So uh, I'm just going to start off with some announcement. Uh, so first of all, welcome, um, Crane, as he shares part two of uh, his message today on Behold the Son of God from Hebrews the first. And also, uh, if you are prepared, so please, um, here's an opportunity for you as we're having Communion Sunday today. So if you need to prepare uh, the uh, what you need, so uh, that's an opportunity to do that. Okay. Also, on March the 14th, there will be a uh, sharing on, on that Sunday as the series of the Sermon of the Mount draws to a close there will be an opportunity for all of us to share how Jesus' words has been impacting on all of us. And if you would like to share, please email Pastor Hilka to share your reflections uh, in advance of the meeting or come prepared to share with the service. And uh, we will not be recording during that uh, the sharing time. So that will allow all of us to uh, be opened and, uh, and just be in grace with God. Also, I believe the 2020 tax receipts has been mailed out or emailed to folks uh, who are uh, has an email. And if you have not received it, uh, please uh, do contact Linda Lee uh, at the church office and the phone number is on there as well. Okay, just a reminder, the 50th Teens Conference will be happening on April 12th to 14th. Uh, and uh, the online Teens Conference uh, is is to invite this generation into his faithfulness. So I encourage all our young folks to continue to um, see if you can attend that online. Okay, And I won't go through all the announcement here, but just to let you know there, we, have, we do have well, weekly groups uh, that are meeting. Uh, one is around the Sunday, Sunday morning Bible study at 9.30. If you need uh, to be a part of that, uh, contact Lily Chong for that. And the Sunday pre-service prayer uh, happens from 10.15 to 10.45. I encourage everyone to come out uh, in uh, communion with each other, but also with God. And the uh, young adults group from 8.30 uh, p.m. Uh, using WebEx. And uh, it will restart on March the 8th. I'm taking a, a short break. Okay. And then obviously the Wednesday prayer time. Uh, please uh, do join us on our weekly prayer from 7 to 8 p.m. And again, using Zoom. And there's a link there for you to, um, to join. So as we uh, calm our hearts and our minds, uh, let us do a responsive call to worship. So we gather together seeking life in all its fullness. We gather in God's name, longing for what is real and true. We gather drawn by the words of our creator and redeemer. And we gather to worship our Lord, who is worthy of all glory and praise. Your love's making all things new. You're working in all for good. For the things of this world, there is hope renewed in the life that is found in you. You make all things. Yesterday and forever, your love never changing, this hope never fading. Speak 
speaking things that are not as if they were. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I invite you now to join me in the prayer of adoration and confession and the assurance of pardon. So the words will be displayed as they are now on the screen. And please note also that the congregational response is marked in bold. Loving and holy God, our creator, Christ and guide. You speak the words of life to us. In you, we find our heart's desire. By your grace, we are saved. When the way forward is unclear, you shed light. When we are troubled, you give peace. When times are difficult, you stir courage and hope. Our deepest longing is to know you and to be known by you. In these difficult days, we praise you for your faithfulness to us. Draw near to us in our time of worship, O God, and open the way before us so that we may follow Jesus without wavering, trusting him to lead us. And now let's say together, Although following you brings joy, O oh God, we confess the way is sometimes hard for us. There are times we get tired and would eagerly settle for an easier road. Some days we find the task of loving others hard. Sometimes we choose anger over forgiveness or ignore the needs of our neighbors. Forgive us when our commitment to you wavers. Forgive us when we take that easier path. Stir the embers of our devotion 
and kindle a brighter flame. Strengthen our determination to follow where you lead and renew our energy to serve in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. We are justified by God's grace, which has come to us through Jesus Christ. By grace, we are forgiven and set free to find new life in Christ. Thanks be to God. And now, brothers and sisters, let us greet one another by passing the peace of Christ. You can do this by greeting the people beside you and perhaps by dropping a message in the Zoom chat box. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. and kingdoms will bow down and every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise who can stop the lord almighty our god is a lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before Him. Make way before the King of Kings Our God who comes to save Is here to set the captives free For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power And fighting our battle sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Let's sing. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord? Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him.
Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold. Refiner's fire. My heart's one desire is to be. to be holy set apart for you my master ready to do your will purify my heart cleanse me from within and make Holy, purify my heart, cleanse me from my sin, deep within, refiner's fire, my heart's one desire is to be the Lord. So at this time, we have our children's message, which is a video today. So boys and girls, young and old, enjoy. <laughs> Many years ago, there was a certain man named Zacchaeus. Da -da What's that? It's a camel. But why do you have a camel? Well, because I couldn't get a refrigerator. And um, you can read about Zacchaeus in the Bible. And they didn't have refrigerators then? Mm, but they did have camels. Okay then. Many years ago, there was a certain man named Zacchaeus. You be Zacchaeus, Waffle. But, but I can't even say Zacchaeus, Flip. You just did. He was the head taxman and quite rich, but no one really liked taxmen because they were often mean and dishonest. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna need some help. He wanted desperately to see Jesus, but the crowd was in his way, and he was a short man and couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus when he came by. <laughs> <laughs> when Jesus got there, <laughs> he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. He already did. <laughs> Jesus said to Zacchaeus, today is my day to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus could hardly believe his eyes. He was so excited to take Jesus home with him. Ow! Everyone who saw this was angry and grumbled. If Jesus is so good, why is he spending time with someone this rotten? But Zacchaeus was stunned. You're right about that. Jesus actually wanted to see him. He realised that God wanted to know him, the despised outcast. Zacchaeus was so sorry then for what he had done. He promised Jesus that he would be a changed man. Master, he said, I will give away half my income to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone, I will pay them back four times what I took. <laughs> Jesus said, today you and your family have been saved. Here he is, Zacchaeus, son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to look for and to save people who are lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no way. 
How could Jesus even talk with that man when so many people didn't like him? He was dishonest and greedy. He'd taken so much money that belonged to other people. Yeah, and what happened? How come Jesus talked to him and had a meal with him? Yeah. Well, the good news of Jesus is that he seeks and saves the lost. Zacchaeus not only heard the good news, but responded to the good news and was ready to change. And so Jesus calls Zacchaeus the son of Abraham. Oh, amazing! Yeah, that is amazing. No, 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 that's a camel. Oh, moo. <laughs>Okay, good morning again, brothers and sisters. I invite you now to join me in the responsive scripture reading. The scripture reading for this morning is taken from Psalm number 102, verses 23 to 28. I will be reading from the New International Version. The scripture passage will be displayed as it is now on the screen, and please also note that the congregational responses are marked in bold. In the course of my life, he broke my strength. He cut short my days. So I said, do not take me away, my God, in the midst of my days. Your years go on through all generations. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same and your years will never end. The children of your servants will live in your presence. Their descendants will be established before you. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Offering and Dedication Jesus challenged his followers to deny themselves in order to follow him. Our offerings express to God our willingness to give not just a little something, but to commit resources we could have used in other ways for God's purposes instead. We are blessed to be able to give. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you challenge all your followers to give to God like you did, without counting the cost. Receive our gifts and bless them so that they may continue your ministry of healing in this hurting world. Bless us with your courage, so our lives speak to others of our love for you and for them. Amen. As we gather our thoughts and our time together, let us close our eyes and take that moment to talk to God and lift our burdens and our praise to him. Let us pray together. In response to these words, Lord, in your mercy, let us all say, hear our prayer. Let's pray. God of all justice and righteousness, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who came to live out your love in this world. We thank you for the vision you have for our lives the promises you have made to us, and the journey you open before us. And today, Lord, we remember with gratitude the ways of our lives are held secure in uncertain times by our trust in you. Moments in these months of pandemic that made us laugh or smile. Moments when we felt your gifts of courage and patience. Times when you helped us overcome temptation. The people who love us and give us encouragement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we are grateful for all these signs of your love in our lives. Thank you for the hope they bring us and show us 
how to share this hope and love with others who are struggling in these difficult days. Faithful God, we pray for healing and restoration in the world that is our home. Hear us as we name in silence the needs and concerns we carry today. We pray for people, places, and situations deeply in need of your grace, especially as they face the fears and frustrations of coping with COVID-19. And we pray for all those offering leadership and service in these times of hope and anxiety, for those planning how to offer vaccines in our community, and for those uncertain about vaccination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our brother Winston Lane, Lord, who is in the hospital with pneumonia. May your healing hands be upon him and that the treatment provided to him work effectively. May our collective prayers find your grace and mercy in accordance to your will. And we pray for those who struggle to feed, clothe the house themselves and their families, and all those who worry about their economic future. Lord, we pray for the earth and its well-being, that areas and species under threat will be cared for. And we pray for peace, with justice in regions of the world facing turmoil, like in Myanmar, where a military coup has taken place and the people are critically injured and killed. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for our leaders, Pastor Hilka, our incoming senior pastor, Alan Go, our interim moderator, Will Ingram, and for our beloved Sister Mary Lee, whom you have called to serve the Chinese congregations. May your voice and decisions guide them in their faith, encourage them in spirits, and energize them in their actions. During this time of Lent, we, your people, are reminded many are the voices that call to us. Various are the paths that lie before us. Endless are the possibilities for distraction. Lord of life, may we so hear your word in worship, in our devotion time and prayers, that we might recognize you more clearly through the Holy Spirit this day and in the coming weeks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 4 to 14, and I will be reading from the New International Version, chapter, verses 1. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs, the son superior to angels. For to which of the angels did God ever, ever say? You are my son. Today I have become your father. Or well, again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the son, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe. Like a garment, they will be changed, but you remain the same. And your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, sit 
at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Well, good morning. And um, it's good to be with you again. So uh, I haven't seen you since Christmas time. And uh, so just to give you a little update on Kathy and myself. Um, well, today, to, uh, this evening, I'll start teaching online again. It's um, live classes, 13 hour difference between here and China. So uh, look forward to doing that and seeing my students again. So, and um, so you can pray for um, te technological challenges. You know, sometimes, you know, Zoom goes down or things like that. I haven't taught since uh, last June. So I'm looking forward to doing that again. And then the other thing um, Kathy and I are doing, we're still trying to get back to China. It's still difficult to get a visa to go back to China at this point, especially spousal visas. And you probably know that uh, in China, you have to do a quarantine, like a 14 day or even 21 day quarantine, depending which uh, city you end up in. Uh, but for some countries, and unfortunately not Canada, for some countries, China requires that you have to quarantine for 14 days in your own country, right? Before you go to China, you have to quarantine 14 days. And then after you go to China, you quarantine for another 14 or 21 days. So it's a really difficult, a stressful time. Uh, let me just share with you a quick story. Like uh, I've met um, some people online among different WeChat groups and uh, Facebook groups about those people trying to return to China. So I helped them out, you know, with some of my experience I've had in uh, going to China before. And you might know that um, they require you to do a, a COVID test and you have to upload it before you fly. And so this one gentleman, um, he, he registered, he uploaded his, he tried to upload his test, but he couldn't. And he said, it's all the websites in Chinese. And so I said, hey, let's Zoom together. Um, so we met for the first time on Zoom and I helped him out. It turns out he had registered as a, as a Chinese citizen and not as a foreign uh, foreigner. So he got his test, he it uploaded online, everything was fine. Then the next day he was flying and he was flying from Toronto to Vancouver. And then there was a two hour layover from Vancouver to Shanghai. But he's at the airport in Toronto and he tells me, there's two people on the plane. They don't want to put on their mask. Right? So his flight is delayed for about an hour and 20 minutes. You know, the police finally come, kick them off the plane. You know, he go and flies over to Vancouver. I think he lands with about 40 minutes before uh, boarding. You know, and so he runs, he runs, he runs. He makes a flight, the second flight. He's on the second flight. And he tells me, now there's an announcement. They're kicking people off the plane. Right? They're calling a list of names. So somehow these people got on the plane. I don't know what exactly was the problem if they had um, actually failed their test and they got on somehow. So they kicked them off the plane and uh, that flight is delayed for like another 40 minutes. Uh, so he did all this running for nothing. But you can imagine all the stress he went through uh, just even getting to uh, China. And so you can pray for us. I think that's what we'll have to deal with one day. So uh, last time I spoke to you on uh, Hebrews 1, verses 1 or 3, and let me just bring up my PowerPoint here. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so last time I spoke to you on uh, verses 1 to 3, and let's do a quick review of that. So the theme of the letter is on the superiority of Jesus, and that Jesus is superior over everything, you know, over the prophets, over angels, over Old Testament priests, over everything. He is our great high priest. He is superior over everything. And in verses one to one and two, it says, uh, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So there's a connection here between the prophets the Old Testament prophets and the Son of God. And we were told by the writer seven things about Jesus in verses two and three that makes him greater than the prophets. And first of all, verse two says, he is the heir of all things. 
Uh, in, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things. And so what is an heir? Well, an heir is someone who, who uh, receives the inheritance. And we're told that God has appointed Jesus to be the heir of all things. And what does God own? He owns all of creation. And Jesus is the heir of all of creation. And then verse 2 says, Jesus made the universe. It's just Jesus is the one through whom God made the universe. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. So Jesus is the creator through whom all things have been made from the smallest atoms to the largest stars and galaxies in the universe and everything in between from DNA to single cell organisms to mantis shrimps and funny looking fishes and hummingbirds and artvarks, oh, sorry, yeah, artvarks and anteaters and pandas and platypuses. And to, of course, human life, God, Jesus, made all things. Then verse three, 3 also tells us, Jesus is the radiance of God's glory. And the radiance is the brightness of the glory of God. And his glory is everything that is excellent or beautiful or praiseworthy about God. And you can see in his creation, uh, such as the northern lights, the a beautiful sunset, the glorious fall colors, a um, view from the mountaintop or from the Grand Canyon, a powerful hurricane. You put all these things together and not a billion times, but an infinite times more, that's God's glory. And Jesus exudes the glory of God. Second Chronicles 4, 6 says, For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God displayed in the face of Christ. So then the author says about Jesus, he says he is the exact representation of God's nature. You don't want to know what God is like? Well, look at Jesus. It's like the imprint of a seal. Now, when the wax dries on the seal, you have the exact representation of the original seal. And Colossians 2 9 says, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. So, how much of God's nature is in Jesus? All of his fullness, all of his fullness dwells in Jesus. And then we said earlier that Jesus is the creator of all things, but verse 3 also tells us he sustains everything by his word. He creates but he also sustains, he holds things, all things together. Jesus made something out of nothing, but then he also makes sure that that something doesn't become nothing. So when we pray to Jesus in the name of Jesus, we are praying in the name of the one who holds all things together by the power of his word. And then the sixth thing about Jesus from the first two verses he provided purification for our sins. Okay? He provided purification for our sins. He cleansed us. He purified us. He died to pay the penalty for our sins. And Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the good news. But the bad news is Hebrews 10.26 says, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth. No sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. And then finally, um, seventh thing said, we learn about Jesus is he sat down at the right hand of the majesty of the right hand of God in heaven, the majesty in heaven. So sat down, is a term that describes rest. 
After making purification for sins, Jesus rested because the work of salvation is done. It's finished. And then right hand refers to the idea that Jesus has a place of honor and power at the throne of God. He finished his work of salvation and he's now ruling in power and authority. So behold, Jesus, the son of God. He's the heir of all things. He made the universe. He's the radiance of God's glory. He's the exact representation of God's nature. He sustains everything by his word. He provided purification for our sins. And he sat down at the right hand of God in heaven. Okay, so in these first three verses, the author of Hebrews compares the Old Testament prophets to Jesus. And he actually doesn't say that much at all about the Old Testament prophets because he just focuses on the glory of God. And so that's a little review. And then in the next um, verses, from verses 4 to 14, he then compares Jesus to the angels. Let me uh, read this, these passages to you again from 4 to 14. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. And speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the son, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment, they will be changed, but you remain the same and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? So let's go back to verse four. He became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. So the author is going to compare Jesus to the angels. But the main thing I hope you get out of this message is to, again, just to behold the glory of God through Jesus Christ. Now, the author of Hebrews, he's going to cite seven Old Testament passes, passages, seven declarations made about Jesus. Okay, first of all, in verse 5, For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father? None, to none of the angels did God ever say this. Okay, and this is from uh, Psalm 2, verse 7. And the angels are sometimes referred to as sons of God. Sons, little s. But Jesus is the unique, the one and only Son of God, same nature as the Father. Or again, I will be his Father, and he will be my Son. And that's from 2 Samuel 7 and 1 Chronicles 17. And then verse 6 goes on to say, And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. That's from Deuteronomy 32. Now, the word firstborn here, that's underlined, it can have different meanings. Okay, so one meaning is, of course, um, the firstborn in a family in order of time. Okay, I'm not uh, the firstborn in my family. Some of you know my, my older brother, right? So he's the firstborn. Okay, so firstborn can have the meaning of 
firstborn in order of family. And some cults misuse this and they say, well, Jesus is firstborn. He's the first created of God's creation. Okay, so, and that's not true because firstborn can also have the meaning of preeminent in rank and the most important. For example, David, King David in the Old Testament, he was the youngest in his family. And God had told Samuel, the prophet, the, uh, the judge, to go to a man named Jesse. And he would tell Samuel whom the next king of Israel would be. And God wasn't pleased with Saul. So Samuel went to Jesse. He had, he had him bring out all his sons so that God would choose the next king. And seven passed before Samuel. And none of them were chosen. So in 1 Samuel 16, chapter 16, he said to Jesse, he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? And Jesse answered, there is still the youngest. He is tending sheep. Okay, so David was the, was the youngest in his family, but the psalmist wrote about David. Here's what the Lord said about him. He says, I will appoint him to be my firstborn the most exalted of the kings of the earth. Okay, so firstborn can mean the highest rank, the most important, and Jesus is the firstborn of all of creation. He is the highest rank. He is the preeminent one. And if God commands the angels here in verse 6 to worship the Son, he says, let all God's angels worship him, then Jesus has to be the Son of God. Otherwise, the angels would be committing adultery, uh, idolatry, I'm sorry, idolatry at the command of God, the Father, which is, the, which is a ridiculous notion. That God wouldn't tell the angels to worship a created being. Okay, so Jesus has to be Son of God. Verse 7. In speaking of the angels, he says, God says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. And that's from Psalm 104, verse 4. Now, the word spirit here, which is underlined, uh, it can also be translated as wind. Okay, wind. Now, uh, what does that mean? Well, angels are spirits. They're spiritual beings. They're not physical beings like us, even though they can take on human form. And maybe the word wind is, a, is better used because it's a play on the, uh, on the word with comparison with the word fire. Okay? Wind and fire, flames of fire. Some of you old enough, you would remember the group, uh, the band, Earth, Wind and Fire, right? Wind and fire. Okay, but why would angels be called winds? Well, winds are invisible, they're powerful, they move quickly, and angels are like that. And not only do angels move quickly and are invisible and powerful um, to carry out God's will, but they're also called flames of fire. Okay, so why? And why are angels flames of fire, called flames of fire? But whenever you read about a flame of fire in the Bible, it's usually in connection with judgment, right? Divine judgment. And sometimes in the Bible, angels are God's executioners. They deliver judgment on the earth. So where does, this, where does it say this in the Bible, you ask? Well, there's a passage in Genesis about the destruction of Sodom. And in Genesis 19, two angels come to Lot. And they say to him, we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great. He has sent us to destroy it. He has sent angels to destroy it. And then in Psalm 78, verse 49, it says, He, that's God, unleash against them his hot anger, his wrath, indignation, and hostility. A band of destroying angels. And then in the New Testament, in Matthew 13, 41 to 42, 
the Son of Man will send out his angels. And what will they do? They will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so angels are spirits and flames of fire. They're powerful beings, but there's someone who's even more powerful. Verse 8 says, But about the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. Okay, So here, God the Father, he's talking to the Son, and notice he calls him God. He says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. So he's saying the Son is God eternal. And then he says, a scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. And so what is a scepter? You know, what does this mean? Well, a scepter is a symbol of rule. Jesus will rule. His kingdom will be one of justice. He will rule with justice and his throne will be forever and ever. In verse 9, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. So this is from Psalm 45, verses 6 and 7. And here we are told that Jesus, he loved righteousness. And he loved it. And how many times in our Christian lives have we obeyed without joy? We obeyed unwillingly. And remember when, when you were young and you got into a fight with a sibling and your parents made you apologize to them? You might have said sorry, but you didn't really mean it. And I'm still like that sometimes when I apologize to my wife, I might say sorry, but really think it's her fault. But Jesus, he loved righteousness. He always did the right thing and he loved doing it. He is total, perfect righteousness. He loved righteousness and he hated wickedness. And whereas for us, we still sometimes love sin. Now, we might not love the sin, but we love the pleasure of sin. Or we certainly don't hate it enough to stop it. But Jesus, he loved righteousness and he hated wickedness. And then comes a direct statement of his superiority over the angels in verse 9. He says, therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. And so who are the companions? Well, the companions are the angels, I believe. And the point here is that Jesus is greater than the angels around him. Angels are only messengers of God. They are servants of God. But Jesus, he's exalted above angels, above all others. And it says he's anointed with the oil of joy. Now, in the Old Testament, not everyone could get anointed. It was just the king and priests and some prophets. And Jesus is all three. He's a king, he's a priest, he's a prophet. He's the king of kings. He's the great high priest. He's the Lord of the prophets. He's also the Messiah. You know what Messiah means in Hebrew? Messiah means the anointed one. And he is greater than his companions. He is superior to the prophets and to angels. And then verses 10 to 12 tell us, he says, uh, In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment they will be changed, but you remain the same and your years will never end. And that's from Psalm 102, part of your uh, responsive reading this morning. And this is a messianic psalm. It's about the coming Messiah, about Jesus. And here's what God says about the Son. First, notice here, he calls him Lord. Right? He had called him God in uh, verse 8, now in verse 10. God the Father calls the Son Lord. 
in the beginning, Lord, you lay the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hand, your hands. Now let's think about this for a minute. How big do you think the heavens and the earth are? You know, how big? So let me try to illustrate this. Okay. I don't know if any of you know the uh, diameter of the earth. Okay. The earth is about 12,700 kilometers in diameter. Okay. Now imagine how big that is. Now most of us are not even two meters tall. So we're just a tiny speck, a tiny speck on this planet Earth. Now, think about the sun, right? What is the diameter of the sun? Well, the sun, well, the diameter is about 1.4 million, okay, million kilometers in diameter. So the Earth is, is a tiny speck compared to the sun, right? And the sun is 110 times the diameter of the earth. So you can line up you know, 110 of these earth across the diameter of the sun. But if you're talking about volume, you can fill, fill in 1.3 million earths can fit into the sun. And so that's how bigger the sun is than the earth. But the sun, and here's the sun in comparison with other stars, right? The sun is just a small little speck compared to other stars. And then um, you have billions and billions of these stars that make up a galaxy. You have billions of these stars make up a galaxy. And then there are billions and billions of galaxies that make up super clusters of galaxies. And the universe or the heavens as the Bible calls it, the observable universe, it's so, hard, so large, so huge it's made up of billions and billions of stars and super clusters of galaxies. According to the current thinking, it's about 93 billion light years in diameter. Okay. Now, a light year is a unit of distance. Okay. It's not time, even though it says year, right? It's a unit of distance. It's a distance that light travels in one year, and it's a huge number. So let's do a little bit of math. Uh, I used to be an engineering major, double E. I hope some of you love math. Okay, so a light year is one is uh, nine point five times ten to the twelve kilometers. Okay, it's, it's a unit of distance, and the diameter of the universe okay, is ninety three billion light years. So that's ninety three times ten to the nine times 9.5 times 10 to the 12, which is what a light year is. So the diameter of the universe is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the 23 kilometers. Right now, how bigger is that compared to the diameter of the earth? Okay, so the diameter of the earth is, remember, 12.7 times 10 to the three. So the universe is 0 0.7 times 10 to the 20 times the diameter of the earth. Okay, so that's not 20 times bigger, but 10 to the 20, 10 to the exponent 20. So that's 10 with 20 zeros after it. And okay, that's how much bigger the diameter of the universe is to the diameter of the earth. So you ask, what is the point of all of this math and astronomy? Okay, what's the point? Well, verse 10. In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth. The heavens are the work of your hands. So these heavens that are the work of God's hands, these heavens that are so massive, 10 to the 23 kilometers, we cannot, we cannot even fathom how big this number is. These things will perish. You know, they will wear out like garments, like old clothes. Our Lord Jesus, he will, he will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed. He will throw them away like old clothes. But you remain the same and your years will never end. The heavens and the earth will perish, but Lord, the Lord Jesus, he will remain the same and his years will never end. That's how powerful Jesus is. That's how powerful our creator is. Behold Jesus, the son of God. Verse 13, to which of the angels did God ever say, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. And that's from Psalm 110. To which of the angels did God ever say this? 
None. Again, the answer is none. God never said this to any of the angels. This is the destiny of Jesus, to rule at the right hand of the Father, to have all his enemies under his feet. And this is a reference from when kings used to make those whom they conquered their footstool. They would make them lie on the ground and place their feet on their, on their neck or on the back of their foes. And it was a symbolic act of domination over their enemies. And the emphasis is that Jesus, he is the promised victor over the enemies of God. This is his destiny. Behold Jesus, the Son of God. The destiny of the angels, however, is in verse 14. The last verse, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? So the destiny of angels is to serve, is to minister, to carry out the purposes of God. They'll keep serving forever those who will inherit salvation. And that's us. We will inherit salvation. They'll serve us. But they also serve Jesus too, because he's the one who will inherit the kingdom. And we are joint heirs with Jesus. So don't exalt or worship angels. Exalt and worship Jesus. He is superior to the prophets. Verses 2 to 3 tells us that. He, he is the heir of all things. He made the universe. He is the radiance of God's glory. He is the exact representation of God's nature. He sustains everything by his word. He provided purification for our sins. He sat down at the right hand of God in heaven. And he's superior to the angels. Verses 4 to 14. He is God's one and only son. And not the angels. And the angels worship Jesus. So Jesus is God. And God's throne, Jesus' throne, will last forever and ever. And who rule with justice. He loves righteousness and hates wickedness. God has set him above the angels and anointed him as king. Jesus the Lord, he made the massive heavens and earth, but they are nothing compared to him. And he will rule over his enemies. There will be a footstool for him. And angels are sent to serve Jesus and us. So behold, Jesus, the Son of God. And let's pray together. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are the God who loves righteousness and you hate wickedness. Your throne will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice is a scepter of your kingdom. When we consider the heavens, the work of your hands, who are we that you are mindful of us? Who are we that you love us, that you care for each one of us, and that you know our situation, you know our needs, you know the anxieties and the pressures and the difficult circumstances in our lives. So Lord, help us to remember that when our problems loom large, remind us to look upwards to you and to your glory and help us to reflect that glory to others. And we pray in your powerful name, Lord Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Quan, for joining us today and uh, for opening God's word to us. May the Lord bless you and Kathy as you continue uh, taking steps of faith forward in uh, the journey he has you on. And now we come to uh, the Lord's Supper. And uh, if you have the elements uh, before you, uh, that's great. And if you don't, uh, please join in any way. The bread and wine is now prepared. So come to his table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who would have been here often and you who have not been for a while, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Let us pray. 
Loving God, through your goodness, we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community throughout the centuries and shares with us now. May we know his presence in the sharing of this bread and wine. Made one in Christ and one with each other, we offer these gifts and with them ourselves, a single holy living sacrifice. Amen. May his spirit help us to prepare our hearts as we partake of the bread and wine, Christ's body given for us, his precious blood shed for us. Therefore, in humility and faith, let us confess in silence the things that now weigh on our hearts. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thanks be to God in Christ for his great love, mercy, and faithfulness to us. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine that we and all who share this feast may be one with Christ and he with us. Here we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. In your mercy, accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Fill us with the joy of eternal life, that we may be your faithful people until we feast with you in glory. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus had a meal with his friends. He took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. He said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and after giving thanks, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Eat and drink with thanksgiving in your hearts.
I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able i will see of the goodness of god Your this is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I've surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Thank you for joining us in our worship service today from near and far and even from uh, work at the hospital, I see. And uh, what an amazing gift that we are free and forgiven in Jesus Christ. Uh, we don't have to perform. We don't have to earn uh, this great Savior, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loves us and wants the best for us. So as we go out into the mission field, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the world he loves. Thanks be to God. Please join us in our breakout rooms after the service. <laughs>